10 years have passed since my first real FIFA game. I had played FIFA 04 through 10, on and off, at friends' houses, and some I owned but rarely played. And I feel we've really taken steps backwards as a football simulator and as a game. Avid players of the franchise sometimes make this point, but I feel like more elaboration is necessary to really unpack the hows and whys of this trend. What made FIFA 11 so special? Well, FIFA 11 was the first game that really had Ultimate Team as a staple game mode. Sure, it was released in FIFA 09's run and was much more basic than we know Ultimate Team to be nowadays. It laid the foundation for FIFA 10 and 11 to take Ultimate Team to the next level. But this isn't the only thing that FIFA 11 had going for it. While not adding much that could be considered new, it did improve on game modes and systems added in previous titles and really felt like a polished and more importantly, fun game. So we'll get the big fat stonking elephant out of the room first. Ultimate Team is what most people consider to be FIFA's flagship game mode, taking the flag from career mode and running 100 miles with it. Quite simply, Ultimate Team is one of the biggest cash cows in gaming. Its simple premise mixed with its monetization strategy mean that it has both wide appeal and huge incentives to keep people playing. As the years have gone by, Ultimate Team has been loaded up with new features, internal game modes, a season pass-like system, squad building challenges, icons, and a whole heap of promos that tend to come out once every two weeks or so. There are tons of reasons to keep playing the game if you've already invested. For some, it's sunk cost fallacy. They keep playing because of the money they've invested, and will often keep spending money on packs with the hopes of pulling a Neymar, Messi, Ronaldo, a slew of icons, both good and bad. Believe it or not, the game wasn't always like this. People often reminisce of the carefree and fun feel of earlier titles, and I don't think this is unfounded. Ultimate Team was much simpler, the promos were less frequent, and the incentive to spend money, well, that was still there. The key difference was in the gameplay. As backwards as it sounds, the past few years of FIFA feel like less of a football sim due to the established metas that dominate play and seeing the same 10 to 15 players in every game. There's a reason that every sweaty rat in FIFA 21 plays the same. It's due to observing pro players abusing certain game mechanics and trying to replicate that as our brains love patterns. It feels like there's less freedom in how you can play the game, less options in which players are good to use, which formations will give you the greatest edge and the chance to win. Obviously, a large contributor to this is the advent of esports. FIFA has always been somewhat of a small-scale esport, but the event that changed that is when we pivoted away from a more balanced and fair online seasons and utilised Ultimate Team. Over the past five to six years, EA would invest more and more into the esports side of things, improving prize pools, in-game integration with spectating events, and of course, pushing pro play as the premier FIFA experience. Those of you that know me will likely be aware that I do esports casting, primarily for CSGO, but in the past I worked with Gfinity and did some FIFA. Of course, when I started, most of the events had already been switched over to Ultimate Team, and I found myself repeating the same player names over and over again each game as people had crafted their meta sweaty teams. I can't even blame them considering the competitive environment, but this has seeped into every game mode of Ultimate Team. Foot Champs is supposed to be the most competitive game mode. It's advertised as such, and of course there's tape behind an entry requirement that must be obtained in Rivals. There's a skill system of 5 placement games, and then it will match you with people of a similar record. The system works fair enough, and I play Foot Champs probably once a fortnight, with a Gold 1 average and an Elite 2 peak. The reason I go for Gold 1 instead of Elite is the sheer mental fortitude it takes to even play 30 games, let alone win 23-25 to 25 of them. People want to win as many games as possible and will use all available cheese to do it. Bridges, stepovers, laquetas, scoop turns, all to try and get the chance of a shot on goal. It's extremely tryhard. Rivals then, I might hear you think to yourself, is the slightly less sweaty equivalent. You'd be wrong. I assume if you're under Division 3, maybe it's easier, but in my experience at Div 1 and 2, it's miles worse than champs. It's just the best of those champs players playing out of their minds with the exact same players you'd see in champs. I always try new teams and players that I think would be fun before getting slapped back into reality by the Varane, Mendy, Cruyff, Neymar, Mbappe, Ronaldo teams I'm used to. 
If you can believe it, even Friendlies has been infected by the toxic try-hard BS. The big brain geniuses over at EA decided that it would be a great idea to add skill-based matchmaking to a casual game mode, and I'm utterly baffled by the decision. I understand the reasoning behind separating lower skilled players, but how are they expected to improve if they can't even play against the top players? Part of improving at a skill is getting taught or beat by someone with a greater understanding, and at the moment the community are more fenced off from each other than ever. It leads to a community left jaded and toxic. Look under any of EA Sports FIFA's tweets and you'll see a flurry of anti-EA and FIFA sentiment. They've been involved in numerous controversies over the past few years, and even more so in the past month or so. It came out that employees were selling some of the game's top players for hundreds or even thousands of euro. It's quite frankly a shocking development, but one that really doesn't surprise. Once again, pointing out the flaws apparent in the game's current system of acquiring top players. A shocking amount of game time and or money is required to compete with top players and anyone who's played the game will know that it feels especially unjust when you're beat by a worse opponent who has a much better team. Now the solution to a lot of these problems may not exist, or at least is a very subjective thing. EA have forced the game into the state that it's in and it would require a lot to dig out of this hole. They could start by bringing down the prerequisite in order to own these top players, either by improving the odds of receiving them in packs, giving more guaranteed rewards for high level players such as minimum overall red picks or straight up giving players away for exceptional performance. As it stands at the moment, it feels that very little changes whether you get gold in foot champs compared to elite, and the amount of luck I've seen given to players finishing in silver 1 and gold 3 is crazy. Now of course I've highlighted a lot of problems, and I could spend all day talking about possible changes or improvements, but I don't want this video to be too long. The point at the end of the day is that it may be time to return to basics to fix the state of the game. Now, I don't see this happening, unless the changes are forced due to loot box laws being passed, but as it stands, this is the state FIFA's in, and the trend appears to only be getting worse. Now, I initially made this video wanting to talk about career mode and pro clubs as well, but there's a lot to unpack in those areas too. If you want to see more of this kind of content, please let me know. The feedback is very much appreciated. Catch you next time. Peace.